Hi, I'm Chris Maragakis of Simply Be Retreats and Therapies. I'm a life coach, therapist and podcaster. Welcome to Mindful Mutterings. Please like, share and subscribe. And as always, thanks for listening. Hi, thanks for joining me. So this week I wanted to talk to you about the ways in which we can live more mindfully so that we can reduce some of the suffering and uh, emotional turmoil that we might feel at times. Um, And the word mindfulness is used all the time and with it comes images of kind of zen out people living a peaceful, blissful life, never getting stressed or angry. Well, ha, is all I have to say to that. Firstly, we're all human and all a work in progress. And secondly, at some point, no matter how much work we've done on ourselves, something is going to trigger us. But that's okay because the important thing is how we deal with it. So let's look at this phenomenon called mindfulness that's meant to bring us a calm and spiritual life then. So the word mindfulness is probably the worst name that could be given to this practice because we don't actually want the mind involved at all because it's that that's usually responsible for most of our suffering. What we want to do instead is connect with and learn from the awareness behind the mind. But I guess awareness sounds a lot more woo-woo than mindfulness, which kind of sounds purposeful and has some very gentle and reserved spiritual um, meaning behind it, or that's how it is perceived. So this practice, and for now we'll continue to call it mindfulness, um, can help us to become aware of how we think and how we're feeling. And it can also help us to see how these thoughts and feelings manifest in the world as our speech and our actions, which are ultimately the tools of the mind. And the more time that we can spend in quiet reflection, the more aware we can become of our core beliefs and whether they are of a compassionate nature or whether they are unhelpful to our progress. And then we can start to tune into our awareness or spirit, call it what you will, and rediscover why we choose to be born into this lifetime and what we wanted to learn from the experience so that we could foster our growth. Now we're often told to follow our heart and there's compelling evidence emerging now that we're not mind-led creatures but actually heart-led beings but I'm not convinced we actually want to be led by what our heart is telling us and I mean that in the modern interpretation because usually what our heart is telling us is mistaken for following the emotions that we're feeling. And and that leads to some confusion. And I don't think it's really accurate because emotions like thoughts are not real. They're just signposts. They're learned responses. They're triggered by chemical reactions to the learned response or to our triggering. And they're just signposts to show us where we need to go to work on ourselves. So... When we're having positive thoughts and emotions, that means we're in alignment with our spirit or awareness. And when we're having negative thoughts and emotions, this is, uh, like I said, a signpost or it highlights the beliefs and habits that are harming us um, so that we can become aware of them, so that we can then challenge and change them if we want to reduce our suffering. So what it actually might be more accurate to say is that we need to let our intuition guide us because that's our authentic driving force and that will never steer us wrong. But we need to create opportunities for it to be heard. Now, I'm sure you're listening to this thinking one of two things, or maybe even both. One would be, why would anyone want to continue suffering? And that's a really good question. But for some of us, the familiarity of our pain and the uh, identity that we've built around this suffering is preferable to the uncertainty and the amount of work involved in making the necessary changes And the habit of self-medicating, be it food, alcohol, substance misuse, pornography, routine, TV, whatever it is, gives us an illusion of control. Um, But also it kind of, it makes the problem external and not part of us. And for a lot of people, that's far more comfortable than the problem or the issue being with us. And the second thing that you might be thinking is, what the hell does she mean by spirit or awareness and choosing to be here? Well, that's simple. So physicists have proven that energy once created never dies. So if we're going to believe the science, and um, that's not done us so badly up to now, then the energy that was created during the Big Bang that formed our planet is the very same energy that we are made up of because we were all created together. So this means that we're all made the same stuff, but also all stuff is, is energy vibrating at different levels. So that means that we're all connected because we're all as I said, built the same energy. And so the term that is generally used to describe this is the conscious collective. Um, 
but then our body clearly doesn't last us for billions of years um, and that's where the issue lies because although the body fails the awareness does not the spirit carries on we never die our energy remains no matter what form it takes and so you could have several lifetimes if you believe in the Buddhist principles or in, in um, belief systems that have reincarnation. Um, or it could be that you go back to the earth and you go dormant or, you know, you go to heaven or you go to another place. But the point is, in every religion, there is something other, something after human experience. And that is because our energy, like I say, never ceases to exist and we're just in a different form. Um, so then... What happens then is that we choose or we seem to have chosen chosen through history to have a human experience we, you know like if you believe a lot of the religious parables we kind of work our way through um through life forms until we get supposedly to the most evolved life form which is supposed to be us um and then the reason we do that is because we're born knowing what we wanted to do better or what we wanted to learn or what we need our spirit needs for its um, enlightenment. The problem is it gets drowned out in all the conditioning um, that we're, we're fed from pretty much the moment we're born. And that's the reason quite often that we feel a bit meh, you know, or like something's not right, or there's got to be more to life than this. And that's because our mind and our awareness aren't reading, you know, aren't on the same page. And so the way that we can start to bring them both into alignment and we can start to work out what we're here for and, and remember, I guess, or undo some of the conditioning that we've taken on is to live mindfully. Um, and so there's, I've come up with 10 ways that you can start to live more mindfully. And even, if, you know, I don't expect you to do all of them. In fact, you know, it's a lifelong practice, but just starting to make small tweaks to your the way you live and the way you think and the way you act with others can really have massive impact not only on your well-being but also on everyone else around you it has a real knock-on effect because like i said we're all connected and what we do impacts on everybody else so the first one number one is create some time and space every day to be still so that you can learn to quiet the mind and allow the awareness or spirit to be heard number two work on accepting the reality of the situation and what I mean by that is dealing with what is actually happening not what you think should be happening or not what you would like to be happening but what is actually happening in front of you so an example might be that someone was rude to you so that triggers you in some way you get irate oh my god they shouldn't speak to me like this you know and you go to your friend oh she shouldn't speak to me like that should she and your friend goes no 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 that's terrible and and that feeds your justification for being irate and angry and you you know you perpetuate this for a while and you get more and more angry or more and more upset or more and more emotional and that leads you then to do the same thing that you always do in this situation because you've been triggered another way of dealing with it would be to not go through all of that and just accept the fact that they did talk to you like that you know whether you wanted them to or not the fact of the matter is the reality is that they did talk to you like that and then you take a calm look at the situation and you work out how you are going to respond so the difference between the two is one you are triggered and you react and the other is that you are curious and you respond either way you still have to deal with the fact that someone has been rude to you it just takes an awful lot of time emotion and angst out of the situation um and then you can use that energy for something more positive um, and would hopefully resolve the situation quickly and well. Number three, spend time outside. Um, we are all connected to the earth. Like I said, we're part of it and it's part of us. And if we don't refresh that connection regularly, our well-being suffers. So, you know, a walk every day outside somehow will do you the world of good. And also it makes you more appreciative of the environment that we're in. And obviously we want to preserve our environment. And just spending time in nature and listening to the sounds has such a calming um, effect on us. Number four, consume well. Choose things to eat that will nourish your body. Watch or read things that will nourish your mind. Spend time with people or doing things that nourish your spirit. You know, the idea is that you don't just consume food. You consume everything. You consume media. You consume other people's beliefs. You listen to what they're saying. So choose what you put into your body and into your spirit well. Number five, keep your environment supportive. So keep it clean and tidy. Use pleasing colours and textures. 
minimize um, any harmful chemicals or synthetic fragrances and be aware of how your surrounds makes you feel again it's just that awareness that mindfulness and you're just becoming more in tune with who you are and, and the way that you are responding number six be of service every day ask yourself how you can be kind and helpful to someone else with no thought of gaining anything in return other than the knowledge that you have been of service somehow so because we're all connected, because we are a human community, giving service is really, really good for us and obviously helps to raise the vibration of everyone around us. Number seven, do no harm. So watch the language that you use when you're talking about yourself or others and trying to keep it factual rather than inflammatory. And if you are really struggling to think of something positive to say about something, then practice not saying anything at all. Um, and always better to be honest and kind than to be lying or deceitful because that has a karmic uh, weight behind it. Number eight, love. It is the most important and um, and it is the most important energy that we have. It's the most important opportunity we have to be better, to help others, to raise our vibration, to keep ourselves well. So open your heart, you know. Be open to love in all its forms. Open your heart to animals and people. Look for the best in situations so that you're constantly tapping into the most powerful energy on the planet. Number nine, choose happiness. Being happy and peaceful is a state of mind. There is nothing in this world external from you that can provide it for you. And if you choose to be happy and at peace, there is also nothing in this world that can take it away from you. So choose happiness. And then finally, number 10, be grateful. Always be grateful. There is something, no matter how bad the situation seems, there is always something to be grateful. And when you start looking for that, solutions start to appear because you are now trying to problem solve. You're in a different mindset and you're not being overwhelmed by the situation. You still might be having a really rough time, but you're now constructively looking for gratitude. And also when we are being grateful, the brain produces all kinds of lovely happy chemicals and that's really good for our body and our well-being and that helps to re when we're being grateful it helps to rewrite the neural pathways in our brain and that makes it easier for us to overwrite behaviors and beliefs that haven't been doing us any favors um, and also when we're focusing on the positive um, we tend to attract more positivity into our life or we just become so used to looking for the positives in a situation that things have less impact on us and our well-being because we become more resilient because we know we can get through it we just need to look for a solution so they're my top 10 um, i can run through them quickly again for you so that you've got them fresh in your mind so the first one is create time and space the second one is accept reality third one is spend time outside Fourth one is consume well. Fifth one is keeping your environment supportive. Six, be of service. Seven, do no harm. Eight, love, always love. Nine, choose happiness. And 10, be grateful. So I really hope you found this useful and can see ways in which you can start to live more mindfully so that you can start to bring some of that zen out calm and happiness into your life and the lives of those around you. As always, if you want to get in touch, please do. I'd love to hear from you. Um, you can contact me via the website simplybe.org.uk. Um, and if you want to work with me or just have a little chat, then please, again, get in touch through there or you can contact me on 07974 618 499. Um, and that's pretty much sums me up for today. So as always, thank you very much for listening and I hope you join me for the next one. Goodbye.